So tell me, Christian, King James Bible believing Christian who goes to a local New Testament church, okay? Goes to a local New Testament church and gets involved in missions and <laughs> tell me. What you learn in church today? What you learn in church today? God loves you. God's got a plan for your life. Now, you know, usually this is how it works. Now, it varies between building and building. But what happens, right? You go to your little church building. Right? You're all feeling proud of yourselves. You're wearing your Sunday best. <laughs> Except in verse, okay, um, wearing your Sunday best and you're jibber jabbering about, you know, what what's what's coming up? Late, um, uh, baseball, right? And talking about how the, you're making little idols out, your you know, out of your children and sending them to softball or baseball or whatever, right? And then the pastor or pastoress, they begin with that lovely contemporary Christian music, right? And then and then like dogs. Like dogs, what are you still, what are you stay like? Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, jump down, turn around, right, right. Like let's everybody stand and worship the Lord, and then you got the people going ah oh, like that, and you know, and then you know everybody's clapping, and yeah, into this uh, contemporary Christian music, okay. And of course, it's usually led by some woman up there, okay. We won't we won't even go off on that. Now, this is not how it is in every church building. Now, of course, Catholicism is totally different in that respect. But then again, you see, this is all based off of Catholicism. But anyway, in your little church building, right, you're playing your, your music, and then some point during that, they stop, and then they get all reverent. Oh, the visage, you know, looking all reverent. And then they ask for an offering. Then they go to Malachi, Malachi. It's like, hey, prove me. Put meat in my storehouse and stuff like that. <laughs> right? Right. And, and they, they even go to, you talk about obscure. Obscuring a passage in Corinthians. You know, God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. But they're telling you off uh, that off the basis of your covetousness. Right? I remember in a church building... Before that, when I was there, uh, there was a time that I did go to church buildings. There was a long time ago, but that quickly faded. <laughs> okay, quickly. Um, where they asked for an offering. Then a medicinal offering. And then at the end, they, they asked for another. It's like, wow, dude, a little uh, greedy, aren't you? Right? Right? And uh, to tithe or not to tithe? To tithe or not to tithe? Uh, tithing is not a requirement today. Uh, we don't, today, we're not supporting the temple like they were in the Old Testament. Hey, Christian, King James Bible believing Christian, you know, you go to your little um, Catholic church building. And, and here, listen, listen, okay? This right here, dear friend, this right here, from the Roman Catholic Church is where you get the foundation for all this nonsense that goes on in your church building, okay? There's a video on the channel here somewhere where we talk about that, but the, the groundwork for that has already been laid and proven to you, okay? That a lot of what's going on in the church buildings comes from here. Not from here. Show me. Show me where it says to go to a local New Testament Bible believing church. Show it to me. You go to Hebrews. <laughs> Dear friend. Okay. Dear friends. Friends. That's going to be another video this week. Listen. <laughs> it's, it's not by grace through faith for all time. Okay. It's. I, I feel embarrassed for some of you who say, it's by grace. If you want to listen to idiots like Jack Smack, go right ahead. Knock yourself out. Okay, bang your head against the wall like he does. 
Okay, but listen, people. It has not been by grace through faith from beginning to end. It's not, it was not by grace through faith during the Garden of Eden. We've talked about that, okay? That is your ignorance of Scripture. Now, ignorance can be fixed, okay? Willful ignorance, not wanting to know, that's stupid, okay? All right? When did the New Testament begin? Answer me that. Why is that important? Because the things that were once then is not what is now. Okay? But then again, okay, let's get back on track here. Uh, they, they get their offering, then they play a little bit more music. Stand up, sit down. You're commanded like dogs. Sit. Stand. Sit. Stand. And then some of them, you know, it varies. But some of them are like, shake the hand behind the person behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then what happens? Especially nowadays. You don't even bring your Bibles. Your Bibles. Never not talking about the scriptures. Okay. You don't even bring your Bibles. Because why? You get a little piece of paper and then you're given this vomitous, not even lukewarm thing of and which is the basis is basically you're a good person, God loves you, okay, God wants to bless you, yeah, you're going through hard times, but don't worry, you gave to this church building to pay everything, so God's going to bless you. That's basically the gist of it. And then they make you stand up again and play some music, and then they send you on your way. And you get your shot in the arm, dose of religiosity, and go on living like a devil. I go to church. Then some of you might actually talk about Oh, you're Christ. Okay. Uh, where do you put... I'll throw it back at you. Where do you send them? You know, I've been asked that so many times. It's, I, I, it's, it's like I want to wretch when I hear it. Like, where are you sending them? To the scriptures. And the scriptures are they that speak of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. That's what we do. That's what saints do. Okay? For God's sakes, don't go to a church building. Okay? It's a social club. And its foundations are here. Not here. Okay? Well, they use... See, rightly dividing the word of truth, dear friend. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Which you guys, some of you, especially some of you guys who... Uh, flavor the um, uh, Baptist persuasion. Not all. Not all. Not all. But apparently a lot. You know, about rightly dividing the word of truth and the whole of scripture is written to you. Uh, you know, with, with that mentality, the whole of scripture is written to you. Um, you know, the, the contradictions that even lost people and atheists and Muslims throw at you because you don't rightly divide the word of truth. What happens? What happens when you're presented with the things that are clearly contradicting, right? Right? They contradict. Well, if you rightly divided the word of truth, those contradictions that the enemies and those who like the Muslims and stuff like that will throw at you. It's like, that's for another dispensation. What? Yeah. 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 But what happens when presented... Like, the perfect example is the James... James 2 thing. The James 2, which is so... Okay. James clearly says, Can his faith save him? Which is a clear contradiction to what Paul taught us being saved today in this dispensation by grace through faith. Paul taught you by his grace through our faith. Yes, James contradicts that. But what happens when you Christians that don't rightly divide? How do you explain that? Oh, you explain that by Colossians 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of Catholics, 
Oh, excuse me. Uh, the traditions of men. Okay? <clears throat> after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And, and, you know, you guys, you, you, you don't even take your Bibles to your church buildings. You, and you get a piece of paper with everything. You, you, you're you're, <laughs> you're uh, goats being led to the slaughter. You are. You are. That doesn't mean that you don't have fellowship with other brethren. But, I mean, you're relegating. It's like, where are you sending them? You need, they need to be under a New a New Testament pastor. Under a New Testament pastor. Mm. Mm. Okay? Mm. Hosea. Hosea chapter 10, verses 1 under verse 4. Israel, now, this is a different dispensation. It was by faith and works. Their faith was in God, which they could not see, but see, they could see the law. And the faith was in God that God would honor them for keeping the law. It was faith and works. Okay? That's very easy. Okay? That's very easy. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased his altars. Now stop. Bringeth forth fruit unto himself. You know, the Christ that you Christians going to the buildings are offering is not the Christ of the scriptures. Okay? Your Christ loves everybody. Your Christ isn't angry at anybody. Your Christ doesn't judge. Your Christ doesn't want to, you know, to bless you abundantly with all worldly things. And there's something wrong with you if you're in poverty. But it's all about you. Them, them, them church buildings, man. It's not about the Lord. It's about the little G God of this world. Yes, it is. But it's not about the Christ of the Scriptures, dear people. I don't care what denomination you are part of, whether a Methodist, Lutheran, King James Bible believing Christian, I don't care. You go to a building like that, it's all about you. It's not about Christ. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. Unto yourself. It's all about you. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. Hmm. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Like phalluses on the top of the buildings. Hmm. The pretty, legitimately pretty looking, stained glass. And there is an art to stained glass. I'm not knocking that. Okay. Their heart is divided. I've talked to some of these Christians like, I'd never give up my church family. Well, that's a catch-22. If you're an actual saint, that, that you can't do that. Okay? But what are they referring to? They're referring to the people that they go to in the building, which is not a church. Our dear brother, my friend, my dear friend, Brother Alexander B. Hartley did a wonderful, in the appropriate sense, um, wonderful, a uh, two-part video on church and churches. Uh, that will be in the description box. Okay, that will be. Check those out. I don't have to do anything on that because the groundwork's already been done. Okay? Groundwork's already been done. That will be in the description box. Okay? Um, you can't, you know, you can't handle that? You don't want to watch it? Then be quiet. Shut up and go away. Go away, and don't forget to put your ten bucks in the offering plate. Which goes to Rome! Because, you know, you got a Jesuit-trained scholar 
<laughs> with a piece of paper on the wall. You need the credentials. You need to be under a New Testament local pastor or whatever who has a badge of shame piece of paper on his wall that he got from a Jesuit-run seminarian school. <laughs> They're not right. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They are all infiltrated and run by Jesuits. And the proof is they come out, yea, hath God said, there is no perfect standard except they themselves. You got to go to the Greek. Which one? You got to go to the Hebrew. Which one? Give me a break, people. Come on, grow up a little bit. Their heart is divided. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot eat at the table of the devils and the table of the Lord and expect everything to go okay for you. Besides, you say, well, God's answering my prayers. <laughs> oh, which God is answering your prayer? Okay? Which one? Which one? Which Jesus are you talking about? Okay? The heart is divided. Now they shall be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now they shall say, We have no king, because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? Now let's read uh, verse 4, of course. They have spoken words, swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up as hemlock in the furrows of the field. And here's what y'all don't like to acknowledge. It, it, it's it's, it's uh, full of wonder. In Acts chapter 7, okay, Acts, uh, Acts chapter 7, Acts 7 is, an, is a pivotal moment. It's not, that's not where the dispensation changed or anything like that, no. The dispensation that we are in was brought in by the death of the testator, by grace through faith in this dispensation. Okay, Acts chapter 7 is pivotal because that is when Israel in its entirety, not individually, okay, rejected the gospel. Okay, but in Acts chapter 7, verses 48 on to verse 50, Stephen, before he gets killed, how be it? Now see these Christians who are, you know, you went to your little building today, right? These Christians, they'll give lip service to this. It's like, well, we know, uh, do you? But see, you shall know them by their fruits. Everything they exhibit, everything they do says contrary to what their lips say. Well, we know that. See, you know, see, you guys know as what a so-called Christian is supposed to be, you know what you are to say. But see, it's like with how many of you actually believe in the resurrection of the dead? Very few. <laughs> they do. Very few do. Okay? It's, it's, it's astounding. It's full of wonder. You know that, okay, I'm affixed with this principle. This is what being affixed to that I am supposed to utter. With their lips they shoot much love, but their heart is far from me. And after their own covetousness. Because why do you go to a church building? Indeed, come on. You guys can't even handle a 15 minute, whatever that slop is, that they give you at a church building. Okay, some might give a half an hour, okay? I remember uh, watching, which I did, some of these guys, uh, the, the Robinson twits, you know, the, the duck guys, and the one guy said, that if I'm up in the pulpit and going for 45 minutes, my wife will look at me, end it. And, wow! <laughs> wow, okay? More on that in a second. But let, let's continue here. Uh, Acts 7, verse 48. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hands made all these things? And exactly ten chapters later, Paul, who was deeply affected, obviously, 
by the the testimony of Stephen deeply. He never forgot that. He kind of makes reference to it in a veiled way, but I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, Paul the Apostle, at that time he was Saul, okay? the, the name change uh, shows of a, a new creature in a way, but Saul, when he saw the stoning of Stephen, okay, that affected him. That, see, that stuck with them. That testimony before, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And then they clubbed him with rocks and he died. That's, see, and that's us, brethren, saints, okay? Our worst enemies, dear saints, are not the Muslims. They're not. They're not the atheists, even though they really get on your nerves. Okay? The Hebraic people are enemies of the gospel for our sake. But they usually, because they base, they judge us off of this Christianity. It's like, let them, let them do what they're going to do. The enemy of the saint in these last days before the redemption of the purchased possession is those of Christianity. It's the Christians. I hate to say this, but that what was it? Was it Mark Twain or was it the, the guy who had all the wives? I can't remember. I think it was Mark Twain who made the comment. It's like, I have no problem with Christ. It's you Christians I have a problem with. That which is Christian. Because, that, right, you read in here, uh, somewhere on the channel, there's a, you know, Lord guided me through it, and others have shown ref irrefutable proof that the practices that are going on in the church buildings do not come from the scriptures, they come from Rome! The groundwork has already been laid. Okay? Well, in Acts chapter 17 now, verses 24 and verse 28, God that made the whale and all things therein, seeing he that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth, ah, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. We know that. You say that. But your actions reveal your heart. Well, you gotta, you're talking to someone, you got to go call your pastor. They come to you, it's like, oh, no, you should go to the church building. Where are you, where are you sending them? To, your, to the church building to learn what? To learn what? You don't, you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah, you believe that the body of Christ is going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You're against the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? <laughs> you, you, you believe that it's uh, by grace through faith from beginning to end a result of not rightly dividing the word of truth. What are you, what are you, where are you sending them? I wonder. Yes. God that made the quail and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Yes, you're alive because the Lord has given you life today. That's what that means. Okay, and see the Christians. <laughs> Christians. These are Christians. Okay, these are Christians. Okay. Um, Christians, they they say with their mouth, okay, take a they, they say with their mouth, but their hearts are far from him. We know, yeah, yeah God doesn't dwell in time, but everything that you profess in your behavior, your walk, okay, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You guys think the Lord needs you in a church building. 
Why do you think, no, this is not the case for all, but like around here, the church buildings are desolate. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They're, they're desolate here in uh, Woodstick, Illinois, usually, usually. Okay? And I say usually because, like, for example, there are, there's the Hispanic church over there that gets a, a rocking crowd, apparently, where the parking lot is always full. Okay? You've got to remember, okay, there's, there's German Catholic Lutherans. There's Roman Catholic, obviously. There's Irish Catholic. There's Hispanic Catholic, okay? All right, all the differing, differing variations. Anyway, let's continue. And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation. Yes, we all come from one descendant, Adam and Eve. That's what that means. Okay, God is a God of variety. God likes variety. He likes distinction. Okay. Or else, could you imagine if you all looked like me? Ah! Oh! Yeah! <laughs> right? 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 How come we all don't have little chihuahuas? Okay? See, the straining at the gnat and swallowing of the camel that a lot of you Christians that go to these buildings just fall in line with is disturbing. You know, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I am a maverick. Go ahead, call me that. Okay, I've been called worse. All right. You guys in the buildings are the ones that are doing that has done the damage. Not we little guys out here who's uh, wants you know to share the gospel, the scripture with people who are leading people on to the Lord through the scripture and not leading them to the Jesuits through a building. Because all the roads do lead to Rome, remember, especially in, in context to a building, dear friend. That they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Yes, you're alive today because the Lord has allowed it. There are no oopsies. Your father and mother might not have planned for you, but guess what the Lord did? Okay? For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. And of course, what do you do? You Christians come to that and say, everybody's saved, they just don't know. No. Everybody's saved, huh? That, that is one of the dumbest. <laughs> everybody's saved, really? Yeah, everybody's saved, they just don't know it. That is one of the dumbest. That's a, you know what, as far as I'm aware, not even some of the bigger proponents of sleazy believism go that far. I mean, I, so a lot of them do, but I mean, the bigger guys is like, well, no, they, they need to at least, they at least have that thing where they don't go, not, you know, it varies. It's, it's, it's such a mishmash. It's such a mess. It's such a mess, okay? It's such a mess. See, we're not guiding you to Rome, i.e. a church building, to where you can learn marshmallow fluff that gets you nowhere, but puts a smile on your face that makes you feel good. Back to Hosea chapter 10. Back to Hosea chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap mercy. Break up your foul ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruits of lies. Ye have God said from your pastor, Jesuit trained, cemeterian pastor. A guy like Stephen Anderson. I won't even get started. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy ways, in the multitude of thy mighty men. Well, if Christ had a church, it would be the biggest one. Which one are you talking about? 
You know, in Isaiah chapter 43, in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 down to verse 28, and oh, oh, and incidentally, it's, we're at, what, half an hour now, okay? Most people can't handle more than 15, sometimes even 17 minutes, okay? Because you're in your building, you're getting antsy. It's like, oh, I gotta go watch that game. Oh, I gotta go get my children to softball practice. Make little idols out of your children, living vicariously through them. Disgusting. You know, as you send them off to the Jesuits, they have their minds poisoned with evolution. And that, that, whatever, whatever. Okay, whatever. Okay. Y'all have an attention span of a net. Okay, <laughs> so do I. Okay. Um, you know, much study is awareness of the flesh. You know, spirit, capital S, and the flesh are contrary to one another. What the buildings try to do is make them all get along. And if you're a saint, saved individual, you know that don't work well. You know, but before we get into Isaiah 43, we will be in Isaiah 43. Uh, go to Acts 20. Okay, you, you, you know, King James missions and getting people to your church building and uh, you know and I, I've seen you know like I have sat and watched some of the things that that Gene Kim guy is involved in that that guy I mean if I didn't know wasn't aware that he claims to be a Ruckmanite and he is I would have at first glance thought that I was looking at a Pentecostal thing because they're throwing hymnals and doing that stuff with their uh, plaid shirts, I mean, they're uh, um, suit jackets. Okay, they're crazy. They're crazy. Flesh, carnal. It's a, it's theater. It's a carnival, okay? You can, you can find that stuff about how that nutball Gene Kemp, okay? How crazy he gets and whatnot. And it, it's, it's like, am I looking at Pentecostals all of a sudden? I don't, I don't even get started on the Pentecostals, man. Don't, don't even get started on that. Them, them guys are crazy, okay? But in Acts 20, okay, you, see, you go to your church building, you get 15 minutes if you're lucky, right? Because that's all you can handle, okay? It's like uh, what I'm talking about, look at Mark the Messenger. His videos are generally only 15 minutes because that's generally the attention span of people. Okay, and there are numbers to verify this. What would you guys do? You talk about, well, get them to the church so they can learn about Jesus. Which one? When you can barely handle 15 minutes. Now, I'll grant you, even as my lovely enemies have said that I personally have an annoying voice. Good for you, okay? Good for you, whatever. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And my creepy smile. I'll give you that. Whatever. But see, the point I'm getting at is, okay, you send people to your building, but yet you can't even handle 15 minutes. Now some of you are saying, well, we go in the services for 45 minutes. Okay? Okay. All right. Tell me when the New Testament began. Tell me, tell me why you don't know about, or reject, excuse me, the redemption of the purchased possession. Most Christians that I have encountered, not all, not all, not all, most seem to be under this influence that Christians are going through the great tribulation. Centuries. Of yea hath God said, brethren, we're seeing the fruits of it. Like it said in Hosea there. But, okay, what would happen in Acts chapter 20, verses 7 on to verse 12? And upon the first day of the week, that's today, Sunday, okay? When the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow. And continued his speech until mid till midnight. Now, much study is awareness of the flesh. I get that. Here a little, there a little. I get that. 
But y'all can barely handle 15 minutes in one of your precious, cozy little buildings. How'd you handle that? But yet, send them to the building to your Jesuit trained cemetery with the paper on his wall. Nothing but yea hath God said. Who corrects the authorized version? Our, our preacher uses King James. <laughs> this is dude from Rockford that I've heard of. He's got a YouTube channel. He does that. Um, he, he corrects the uh, authorized version. Okay. And also, he, you know. But he's from Rockford, here in Illinois. He's got a big channel, apparently. Um, I've, I've heard of him. I couldn't watch him. I couldn't watch him. I, I, I was sent a couple of videos of the guy. He's got glasses and wears the suit and tie. And some guy from Rockford here. Some of you might know who I'm talking about. But I, I, I did. I, I tried to, you know, I sat here in this very chair. It's like, okay, let's go. It's, it's, I couldn't even. <laughs> okay, I couldn't even. All right. But he was preaching until midnight. Verse 8. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in the window a, a certain young man named Eutychus. Cus. Or is it Chus? Eutychus or Cus. I think if it's up top. This, this is an inside thing, so don't worry about it. So until I'm corrected. Okay. U T Chus, being fallen into a deep sleep, and as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. So, and there are people uh, apparently who fall asleep during a 15 minute wishy washy nonsense marshmallow fluff sermon that your Jesuit trained cemeterian gives you. Because they know your attention span and they gotta uh, not offend them, uh, the classes, right? This poor guy, you to kiss or whatever, you to kiss. I'll be corrected on that later. That's an inside thing. Um, <laughs> poor guy, he's like, fell out the loft and died. <laughs> I like, I like this. Okay. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was taken up again, and had broken bread and eaten, and talked a, while, a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. <laughs> Paul's like, don't, don't chill, guys, he's not dead. Come on, come on, here. He's like, you ain't getting up that easy, buddy. And then he continued. <laughs> Okay, that uh, whatever. But, I mean, the point is, okay, the point is, I, I would have loved something like that. I would have. I, You know, sure, you can say, hey, can I got to go to the can or something like that. But, I mean, let's go. Let's go. All right? Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy the seats. Now, is this the case... For every single solitary person, spirit, soul, and body that goes to one of these buildings. No, it isn't. But the majority speaks for the few. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. All right? This is the foundation of your system. Not this. You may point to the Old Testament. Isaiah 43. Verses 8. Where are, oh, where's my notes? Verses 18 on to verse 28, to the close. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast in the, of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. To give drink to my people, my chosen. Now, doctrinally and dispensationally, this is clearly a reference unto the Jews. We are looking at this for our instruction and in righteousness. If you don't know the difference between those two, that I pity you. 
There will be a link in the description box where we will talk, uh, where we go through length in length about instruction in righteousness. Okay? It'll be in the description box. Again, if you don't want to watch it, then go away. Okay? At least, at least ponder and think about what's... And if you want to reject it, and will be a... Blah, 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 fine. Fine. Go, go. Take a long walk off a short pier. Okay? Go knock yourself out. Okay? But if you're not even going to consider... Well, what about you, Brad? Uh, dude. <laughs> okay? Uh, I have considered. I have been shown. Okay? All right? Okay? What kind of... What, no way. But anyway, let's continue. Okay? <clears throat> and, and Christians, especially those that seem to be of the Pentecostal blend, will like to come to this with their them catapulting off of your covetousness. Will come to this to puff you up in your covetousness. Because it's all about you in the church building. It's not about... It's about the little G-God of this world. And when it's about the little G God of this world, it's about you and ye are of your father the devil. This people have I formed for myself. They shall shew forth my praise. In the church building. In the church buildings. Right. Right. Sure. Uh -huh. I think perhaps maybe no. Thank you very little. But thou hast not called upon me. Now you've got to remember to write it by the word of truth. Okay? Because he's going to mention a temple. But we already read, we always oh, going to make mention about, you know, bringing offerings to him and stuff like that. Okay? But what do you do with Acts? Hmm? What do you do with Acts 7 and 17? Most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands. You Christians that are in your buildings today, you got that from these guys. According to these guys, and according to you, you got to go to a building. We don't, but you say you don't believe that, but your actions give you away. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Those were things that were relegated for temples. During the dispensation where, number one, eternal security was not there in the time, in, under the law. It wasn't there. Okay, That's relegated to this dispensation and to the 144,000 Hebraic Jews. Okay? That's it. Okay? See, and that's another thing. All right? It was not by grace through faith from beginning to end. Okay? Eternal security, God permanently dwelling within the saved believer is for this dispensation and the 144,000 Jews. Okay? This dispensation. Kind of rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? Thou hast bought me no sweet cane with money because uh, under this dispensation they had a temple. The Levite system, the Levitical uh, sacrificial system, okay? All right, a different dispensation. Neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I am he, that blotteth out thy transgressions for, me, for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father has sinned. And thy teachers have transgressed against me. And you can tie that in. The, thy first father, Adam, has sinned. And thy teachers have transgressed me. You know in Psalm 119, I believe that's in Mem. Might have that wrong. But in Psalm 119, I have more, uh, I know more than the ancients. More than my teachers? Instead, hold on one second. Let's find that. It is Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. 
Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Isaiah 43. Thy first father has sinned, Adam, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Okay? Back to Mem. I have uh, verse 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet, I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I may that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Thou hast taught me. Not a Jesuit scholar. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. The name's a blasphemy. Okay? Isaiah 43, verse 27 again. Thy first father, Adam, has sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. Okay, simple, obscure, obscure. You want simple? Well, what happened here, dear friend? What happened? Uh, go to Ephesians chapter 3. Okay? You want simple? Let's, let's do simple. Let's do simple. Why? And you don't understand this, huh? Ephesians 3, verse 1 and verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, <laughs> which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself. They were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. There were types, figures of it in the Exodus and also of the Ark. But they were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Okay, they weren't. Or else the, all the apostles and disciples were, would have been like, you know, sad to see the Lord go. But would have been like, okay, go. Go, we know what you're doing. That wasn't the case. Okay, that's another deception of you people who are in the church building. And they were looking forward they were looking forward to the cross and book <laughs> you people. Oh my heart goes to you. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. In other ages, dispensations. Okay? Dispensations within the dispensations, salvation changes. Okay? And Acts chapter 10, verses 44 and verse 48. Okay, here's more evidence of this. Okay. Acts chapter 10 verses 44 and verse 48. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. He was speaking to Gentiles. Okay? And after the rejection of Israel of the gospel, in Acts chapter 7, it was this dispensation by grace through faith, yes. The very first individual after the rejection of the gospel of Israel, the very first person that we're told of in Scripture that um, was added onto the body that was already there happened to be an Ethiopian eunuch. You know why that's significant? He was black. Watch out for the black Hebrew Israelites who say that uh, this that the Christ of the authorized version is the white man's. 
got uh, whatever. Watch out for that. That's dangerous, okay? And they of the circumcision, uh, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, the Hebraic Jews, which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, Jews were present, okay, and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? A public profession of an inner conversion, okay, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son. Oh, excuse me. In the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. <laughs> now, the public profession of an inner conversion, water baptism, that's what that's for. Water baptism is not salvation. Okay? But when you you look at Matthew chapter 27, or 28, okay? You look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, okay? This is very simple. If you got water baptized as a public profession like this, okay, whatever, okay? But pay close attention. Um, you don't see anyone in Scripture anywhere in water baptizing them with in the name of the Son and of the Holy, uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You don't see that anywhere in Scripture. What you do see is being baptized in the name of the Lord or in the name of the Lord Jesus. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name singular. Why doesn't it say S? Well, God is one in essence. Well, if God's a trinity, which he isn't, like you guys believe, three persons. How embarrassing. Three persons that make woohoo, one God? Then in the names of the Father? No. Singular. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the whale. Amen. That that funny. Because, you know, uh, you've heard of the Johannian comma, you church-building Christians. Of course you have, because you have a Jesuit-trained cemeterian as your uh, New Testament local church pastor. Uh, 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear a record in heaven, the Father, the capital W Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one in essence. No, they are one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? Uh, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I'm not against fellowship with brethren. I'm not at all. You know, meet up at someone's house. Have, have your wife make the milk and cookies. Do whatever. Get the nacho jalapeno cheese dip or whatever. Whatever. Fine. Fine. In little congregations within the home. You guys have made an idol out of a building, and that comes from these guys. Luke chapter 5, verses 36 on to verse 39. And he spake also a parable on them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new make a rent, maketh a rent. And the peace that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. Now, the old past, the old ways, yes, we know. Yes, we know that, okay? We know that, okay? <laughs> you know, this, this, and you can, you can be cute and say, well, there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> and yeah, read that context. 
talking about the depravity of man, okay? Of how wicked we are, okay? All right? And no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. Oh, and the Pentecostal charismatics take this and, you know, try to justify that. Blah, 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 whatever. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. Now, there's a difference here between saying the old past, like uh, seek ye the old past, like the scriptures, walk according to the scriptures, like they used to do. It's not what that's a reference on to, okay? Matthew 27, verses 50, on to verse 53. What has happened? Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross. Okay? Uh, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. The dispensation has changed. The Gentiles are grafted into the tree of the Jew. We are saved by his grace through our faith today in this dispensation. And when you go the way of the, the elected way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon him, and he saved you. He seals you with himself. You are once saved, always saved in this dispensation. But what happens? People don't like that. They want a Christ on the cross. And if you worship a Christ that is still on the cross, then guess what? Guess what? It's not finished, is it? He's still on the cross. Huh? What happens? Matthew 27, verses 50 on to verse 53. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Now that veil was the covering of the holy place where the head priest on Yom Kippur would go behind the veil and uh, say the name of the Lord or whatever uh, uh, on Yom Kippur and go behind there. That was rent in twain, revealing the hidden place. Hmm. Very significant. Very significant. Okay. And the graves were open. And many bodies of the saints which slept the road came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Mm. That also gives you reference onto the fact that the way of heaven, to heaven wasn't open until the death, burial, resurrection. And of course you Christians in the, in the buildings, you all believe that the Old Testament saints died and went to heaven right away. Then why was Samuel called up? Hmm? Abraham's bosom was in the earth. Jesus went and preached to the saint, uh, to those, to the spirits in prison. Prison, okay? You equate prison with a horrible thing, <laughs> especially with American prisons, of course. But scripturally, that context is not very accurate, meaning to equate it as something horrible. They were held there until the redemption of the purchased possession. Excuse me. Until, <laughs> not to, until the uh, catching away of the body of Christ, no. Until the Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross. He went down there and said, hey, I shed my blood. The way of heaven is open now. Let's go. Okay, we've talked about that. And see, you Christians in your buildings that are being taught, yea, hath God said, you don't know any of that stuff. Nobody wants, you know, these people who go to these buildings. God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Okay? This is the New Testament. We are in this dispensation where it is by grace, and, by grace through faith. It was not like that under the law, under the dispensation of the patriarchs, or definitely not in the Garden of Eden. And it is not like that during the time of Jacob's trouble, nor the kingdom of heaven. 
in eternity, you don't got to worry about it because it's eternity after uh, sin and uh, sin is done away with permanently. You want a religious system. You want a Christ on the cross to make you feel good. And see, the temple, the veil in the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. Signifying many things. You know, the circumcision made without hands and, you know, abolishing it in his flesh and stuff like that. You guys who are going to the buildings, you are trying to pull something that was under the Old Testament, make it viable today, and you're justifying it through the precepts of men. It's going to be it for this little video. Uh, the Lord, like I said, the Lord, oh, 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 the Lord just, just opened all kinds of, I'm just going to do one today. Got one tomorrow that, uh, uh, Lord willing, that, uh, I'm going to be good. But that's going to be it for this video. And, you know, I have to agree with a comment about how, yes, it seems that we're busy tearing each other apart. It does seem that way, doesn't it? But see, that mindset that you said in your comment, and I'm not attacking you. I'm not. You go ahead and comment. You get crazy, I'll block you. But... Um, You need to come back to Mother Church. This is the mindset. This is the veiled thing. Whether you meant this or not, whether you realize it or not, okay? The previous video, I was addressing a select few individuals that are causing a whole bunch of problems, okay? People who are not my brethren, okay? That's who I was addressing, okay? Certain select people who surround themselves around a certain individual. Not the certain individual himself, but these people that uh, ingratiate themselves onto that. Those are the ones I was addressing. Okay? Flesh gets in the way all the time. Okay? That happens. But see, you, your implication is, well, you go to a church and you won't have that. So what you So the veiled thing is, you need to go to Mother Church. Because all we we all preach the same thing and we're all on the same line, you know. And you're right. You Christians in the buildings are serving one God. And it's not the God of the authorized version of the scriptures. Because if you were, what are you doing in there? And you know what, you Ruckmanite people, um, even Ruckman himself wrote a book, which was like $500 to get. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't even give those modern Ruckmanites the filling that's out of my teeth. But um, even Ruckman himself said that when you put up a building and go to a building, you are anti-New Testament. But yet, he was all uh, waving his jacket. He didn't do that, I think. Uh, about being in a church building himself anyway. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching if you do. See you in tomorrow's Lord, will Lord Willing video. Thank you.